So today I'm going to be talking about how technology is not simply instrumental in terms of what we, how we usually think of tools, but it's transformative. It mediates our activity, uh, particularly in relation to socio-technical systems. And in the pursuit of a capitalist agenda when it comes to innovation and, and so on, uh, I'm bringing into play a, a Marxian approach to psychology, which sounds contradictory, but that's the whole point, isn't it? Uh, so this, whole, this approach to psychology uh, looks at... Uh, you know, the individual not as a separate object, but somebody who is uh, defined by their relationship between themselves and their environment, their history, and so on. You probably are familiar with the notion of the hidden medium is a message, and that's what I'm trying to get at here. Media transforms. Uh, it doesn't just convey information, but it transforms radically. Uh, There's a disturbing example there of a tweeting president. Um, we know what that means. <laughs> so, uh, media are transformative. It results in quantitative changes. We use a tool, it allows us to get something done quicker, faster, more of it. But it, certain tools change our identities. It results in a qualitative change. So, uh, you know, use a mechanical digger, no longer a hole digger, you're an, a machine operator. Uh, so, the perspective <coughs> we're referring to here is called activity theory. And that's what I'm bringing to understanding the process of design and innovation. So you have a person who is orientated towards a socially meaningful goal or object, and that is mediated by the tools that they use, but also in dialogue with the rules and community and the vision of labor that you have <coughs> in any organizational and societal context. Uh, so uh, in relation to that, uh, the persons, therefore, inseparable from their their uh, cultural, historical, and material context, which brings in the notion of boundary objects. When one person's activity intersects with another person's activity, some, you sometimes get uh, conflict and uh, contradiction. Uh, an example here, for ex uh, well, Brexit, so should I say any more? Um, <clears throat> it kind of speaks for itself. So it, uh, borders themselves are boundary objects in the obvious sense, but also in the more complex sense as we're seeing playing out. So, and technology, sometimes people resist it uh, because of, well, we've seen examples earlier, uh, sometimes people fight over it as a res re uh, resource. But when it comes to design and innovation, these are realities that we have to design for. It's not just here's a good idea of a tool that can do something, but we also have to consider its effects and implications. So designing technology for the real world requires us to consider a whole range of of activities. So we're designing activities, not just technologies, not just tools that do uh, various different things. Uh, an approach that uh, I take with my team is the notion of concept of operations. Basically, you, you try to describe and, uh, and understand the current ecology of people using technology towards socially meaningful goals. And you also try to represent what is the target state where we're trying to get to with design. Uh, and look at where people's different activities intersect with each other and note them as potential points of conflict, and those become design challenges in themselves. So it's not just the instrumental design challenges, but the organizational, cultural, and ethical, and so on. So here's one example, the task project, Total Airport Security System, where you're looking at taking data from an airport, fusing it, making it intelligible, and then feeding that back through decision support. And there are all sorts of questions that uh, emerge from that, which are not just technical. Um, for example, we're designing a new organizational layer. Who will staff it? What sort of skills are required? How does that intersect with the existing uh, operational roles? Or, for example, the Homer project, no relationship with the previous Homer. <laughs> um, again, a system, technological system for managing homemade explosive re recipes found on the internet, which then ultimately has to link to the operational context of people discovering suspect devices or substances on the ground and how that information is made actionable and usable. Key issues there, culture and cognitive style between how police officers think you know, in a very form-filling way. Um, they don't think in terms of the you know, web 2 o wikis and all of that. Or uh, the uh, trespass, which is about risk-based screening at a border crossing. So avoiding this extreme of, of ch checking everyone or checking no one, you look at what risk do people play and what information um, is used to decide that risk and then screening on a more limited basis. All sorts of uh, ethical and accept public acceptability and trust issues are related to that. So you've got technology and you've got all these issues. And I often like to finish on a bang, so going back to Homer. One Thank you. <laughs>